Lotus Incarnation Realty Group, we are evolving every single moment with the new experiences. Let's learn together. Woohoo! Continue to celebrating 152 subscriptions. In this video, we invite one of my best investment friends who love camping. Yeah, Born in Canada. Um, both my parents are from uh, Yugoslavia, or now the former Yugoslavia, and uh, they met in Canada. They both came in the 50s, and Steve's Canadian for many generations. For all intents and purposes, we're Canadian. <laughs> I'm Diana Spremo, and together with my husband, Steve Lytle, we are real estate investors. We live in Oakville, Ontario. So we own uh, one in Hamilton, one in Brantford, and one in London, and we pre-con uh, condo in Toronto. And uh, we also do some past of investing companies like Graybrook and Pro Funds and some private lending. More recently, we are interested in getting into the US. So we're doing a lot of research now and trying to set up so we can, uh, we, that can be the next chapter of our real estate investing journey. Uh, you know, there we were entering our 50s, you know, contemplating retirement and, you know, how we're going to sort of live uh, both financially, spiritually, operationally, you know, for the rest of our lives. Hey, what do you think about getting into real estate investing? Um, but we said, let's do this. And and we did it. And we have I mean, absolutely zero regrets. We love the fact that we are real estate investors. And we love the fact that we've entered this incredible community. So cool of friends and the all changed, right? Since then. Oh, it did. It did. Yeah. We had no idea what we were entering. I mean, like I said, we want we knew we were going to enter the real estate investing business and we didn't know anything about it. We had zero background. It's like more of our friends now are in the real estate investing community. It's like my Facebook now is splattered with real estate investing um events and friends. Organizing the investors camping? That idea came from, uh, we were actually out for dinner at Jim and Irismar's house last year. And at the end of the night, uh, you know, some of the men had had a, a few beverages and the guitars came out. And I happened to say, you know what I love? I love listening to the guitar around a campfire. And then I just stopped and went, oh, we should have a Key Spire camping trip. And Irismar said, yes. We're like, let's do it. So um, she and I booked a, last year, we booked a bunch of sites. And they all filled up really quickly. And we told other members, you know, this is where those sites are. If you want to book the sites, you know, in and around there, you know, please join us. Like between 30 and 35 people come, you know, between the kids and a couple of dogs. It was great. So this year we decided to book more sites ahead of time. We booked 15 sites. Uh, they're already all booked. We, we're up to about 40 people. So it'll be absolutely incredible. I love that. Like, in, And the nice thing about it last year, honestly, we didn't even do a lot of talking about real estate. Um, not to say that anybody wouldn't have minded it because we, we love talking about it. But it really was just about camping, relaxing, you know, going to the beach during the day, doing, you know, a barbecue and bonfire at night, having some, some music, you know, Otto was teaching us how to dance. It, it was wonderful. So tell us about your trailer business. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I know we, we love our trailer experience. We kind of love the trailer lifestyle. Admittedly, neither of us grew up uh, owning or, or being in a trailer, but we just liked it. We've always been campers. We've took the girls camping uh, since literally they were, you know, we put the play pens inside the tent and had, had that. It was funny when you think back now, we had, uh, you know, two of us, we had, you know, two babies in diapers, one in a play pen, the other one, one and a half years old, and we had a hundred pound dog in the tent. And we loved every minute of it. So the girls have been camping since they were infants. So, but we've always talked about maybe having a trailer. We also thought, um, for business purposes, the trailer would be great because this way, like I'm in the GTA and this way, you know, rather than having to buy a million, million dollar, ha um, million and a half dollar asset and make possibly, you know, only a couple hundred dollars a month cash flow, we could buy a $50,000 asset and make the same, if not possibly even more cash flow. So we said, this is fantastic. So we went out and bought a new trailer and then, so we actually did buy it more for business purposes, but the nice thing is we get to use it ourselves. So I know like we made a post and a lot of people said, you know, that's great, great idea. Um, and, it, and it is, I mean, I say thank you to everybody, but a lot of people have been asked us how it's been. And I will be completely honest. The tra we love the trailer. What it has taken is time. Uh, we do deliver it. So somebody will say, I'm going to a provincial campground and I'm at site 
100. And so we'll take it up to them. We'll spend about an hour showing them how to use it and we'll leave them alone. And then a few days later, we'll go up and pick it up, hook it up and bring it home. So admittedly for each rental, we're doing four driving trips. You know, that's not for everybody. I know some people would say, oh my gosh, that's a whole, you know, sometimes, especially if we're delivering it somewhere like a provincial park, one, you know, the Pinery or Sandbanks, you know, two, three hour drive. By the time we go, go there, show them around how to use the trailer and drive back, that's a whole, whole afternoon gone. So we enjoy it. I mean, thank goodness we do, because, you know, we only bought the trailer last year. We do enjoy it. Um, after we've left them with our trailer, we've often driven around, we've gone out for lunch, we've sat on some really nice patios, we've discovered some towns that we haven't been to before. So we're really enjoying the experience. The, the, you know, the, the money is, is there, the cash flow is there. Um, you know, we, to be honest, we uh, didn't quite break even last year, but you have to think about it. Last year, we had to equip the trailer. I love the way our salesperson put it to us because he told us the sales price. And then he said, well, you have to buy this and you have to buy that and this and that. And I kind of looked at him and I gave him a little look and I said, I thought you said there were no hidden costs. And he says to us, well, think about it. When you have a baby, does the baby come with the playpen? Does it come with the diapers? Does it come with the formula? It's like, oh, okay. So we had to equip the trailer with a lot of upfront uh, expenses that you know will only be uh, one-time expenses. So, I mean, really, when you look at the financials, uh, we were about $2,000 uh, in the hole last year, but that's several thousand dollars that we won't have to spend ever again on equipping the trailer. So this summer should be quite uh, lucrative as far as uh, renting the trailer out. How long is the lifetime of trailer could be? Oh, the, the trailers can last uh, a qu quite a long time. And, and as long as we take care of it, you know, we'll continue, hopefully continue having it look like new. I mean, we're on, like, we're on a long-term plan here with the trailer, um, you know, at least 10 years. Um, you know, it depends what we're going to do in our, you know, actual retirement, whether it'll be time to, you know, uh, close that, uh, trailer chapter, but for now we're looking at probably at least a ten-year plan. Passive appreciation. Yeah, so a trailer is a depreciating asset. Um, maybe uh, trailers are still a popular uh, amenity. Uh, maybe it won't depreciate as much as a vehicle. Um, but again, for us, we bought it also in, in order for the family to enjoy it. So we're okay that it's a depreciating asset. Cash flow comes along with it. Yes, yeah. So we may not be making that, you know, passive income, the appreciating uh, income, but, uh, you know, the uh, that we're getting from our rentals are paying for it. So essentially, we've got a free trailer. You want to have a more standing trailer business or this one is enough? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny that you ask that because when we first bought the trailer, we got so excited. We were saying we could have a fleet of these <laughs> summer when we realized that we were dropping, uh, delivering it and dropping it off. We, the truth is we can't do that for more than one trailer. You know, Steve can't be spending all his weekends and much of his weekday, uh, you know, delivering and going back and picking up the trailer and then, and then going back again a few days later. Like he can't do that. So there it was the thought of maybe buying a RV, you know, like a, a trailer with with a motor. I don't know if, if everybody knows, but the ratio of price, um, in generally speaking, is about one to four. Mm -hmm. Like our trailer, uh, you know, it's a travel trailer, cost us fifty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Had we bought, had that been an RV, it would be about two hundred thousand. So, um, as I said, while we got excited about owning a fleet when we first got into this, I think realistically, we probably won't. Um, but maybe we've only had one season under our belt. So maybe uh, give us a bit more time and we'll see whether that changes. Uh, Victoria Day to the Thanksgiving? Yes. Last year was only um, a difference because it was brand new for us. We literally had not taken it out and we had rentals booked for June. So we looked at each other and said, hmm, maybe we should take this out before anybody else does. So we actually took it out on the May long weekend. And our last, our last booking was over Thanksgiving weekend. So every single weekend, the booking. Almost. Yes. Every single weekend was booked, ex of course, except for the weekends that we booked it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, what we did find, we again, because we were new at it, we didn't want to put a lot of restrictions. We did not restrict the uh, minimum number of nights that people could book. What we found was um, about half of our rentals were two nights. 
you know, mm-hmm. Friday to Sunday. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's a lot of driving uh, for us, especially for Steve, sometimes when he went by himself to, to go and drop it off and then go back two days later to pick it up. So there were some rentals that were three nights, four nights. Um, uh, we had one five day and one week, but they weren't all such like the ones that were only two or three nights, the trailer would sit from, uh, you know, Monday to Thursday or Monday to Friday. So for example, you know, with Airbnb, they say, oh, account for about an 80% uh, fulfillment rate. Mm -hmm. Ours was less. Ours Mm -hmm. was about 55, 60%. Mm -hmm. Um, But so what I did this summer is I actually put a three night minimum for the entire summer. Mm -hmm. So we've only, it's only uh, March and uh, we've only got two bookings so far. And the site that we we uh, posted on did say it, it'll start um it'll start picking up when the snow melts and it gets a little bit warmer <laughs> so that hasn't you know it's still march we still got a lot of snow out there but uh we do hope and expect that the bookings will start uh um coming once april hits mm-hmm. so three nights so how much does it cost we vary the cost a little bit depending on the mm. night for example, Fridays and Saturdays are uh, $175, weeknights are $150, and long weekends are $200 a night. Um, we are a little bit on the higher end of nightly rates, but also it's because last summer our trailer was literally brand new. And if you looked at our description, the first two words I put in capital letters were brand new Mm -hmm. and we did get 11 bookings for the entire summer and all 11 were amazing like some of them said you know that we treated your trailer better than we treat our house so the nice thing is is sometimes people are a little bit tempted to lower their rates to get more bookings but I feel as though the higher the rate the higher the quality of renter you're going to get so we didn't have any issues on people having um you know, not such good stories about the renters. We didn't. We actually had all great experiences. Everyone can be pro investors. Thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next video.